bluebird. Hi, bluebird. Hey, Rich Robin here with Getty Pit of Texas Custom Barbecue Pits. I am at my house. I am going to be cooking, uh, me and my boys will be cooking some uh, six racks of pork uh, uh, ribs. And I figured I'd shoot a little how-to video on my Meat Slinger. This is my MS-24. It is a smaller of the two model Meat Slingers that I have. I have an MS-36 and an MS-24. I have the MS-24 in the back of my concession trailer. Uh, it's a 20-foot concession trailer, rear porch with a front kitchen uh, uh, enclosed. And you'll see all that here in a minute when we when we pull the cameras inside. But the intent of this video right now is to show you how I prepare my meat slinger to start it up, how I start it up, and then getting it to temp, and then prepping meat, and then putting meat on the meat slinger, and then cooking throughout the day for about, I don't know, maybe we may go up to six hours on the ribs. I'm gonna cook them low and slow, I'm not in a hurry. Uh, but I'm gonna get it to temp. I usually start at about 270, 275. Initially, when I put that cold meat in there, because uh, that will you know drop your temperatures down anybody that cooks knows that already uh, those that don't cook again kind of helping you out gives you some tips uh, on that and then I wind up turning the temperature down probably 250 and then at some point I'll probably go to 225 and then I'll probably bump it back up to 250 finish my ribs out uh, and then take them off and you'll see all that so throughout the day I do adjust the temperatures on my, my pit I don't cook at one steady temp uh, I, I, I usually don't do that unless I'm doing an overnight cook and when I'm throwing briskets or butts on there that are cooking for 8, 10, 12 hours uh, low and slow then I'll set it at 225 or even 180 for that matter and just let it go throughout the whole night and then when I get up in the morning I'll usually crank the temperature back up depending on what temperature my briskets or my butts are and get them uh, back up and, and, and cooking a little quicker at that point to finish them out and take them off the pit anyway that's a whole different video I do have cooking classes Gator Pit Barbecue School You'll see that at GatorPit.net. So go to my website at GatorPit.net. For my cooking classes, I have one coming up October 17th, uh, 2020, uh, 2020, and that is our next class. If you want to attend that class, I strongly encourage you to go online at GatorPit.net, register for the class. There's a link to my, my website on there to the school. Uh, I've been doing t uh, uh, classes now for 10 plus years. Uh, they always fill up, they always book. Uh, and we wind up having to cut it off uh, the registration off because there's limited space <clears throat> But you'll get uh, two to three pit masters that will help you out at the cooking class and we'll show you how to cook different uh, meats and uh, Side dishes and desserts as well all on a smoker um, And an offset we do use an offset stick burner for that So today we're going to be doing those ribs and that's like I said I got my boys that are gonna be with me So you'll see them throughout the pit uh, 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 video and some pictures and you heard one of them just now talking to my German Shepherd Blue. Uh, <laughs> just petting on Blue, playing with Blue while I was shooting this video earlier, starting the video. But uh, we're going to get cranking here. I'm going to turn this off and move it inside the trailer where my meat slinger is. I'm going to show you what I do to it to prepare to fire it up. And then I'm going to fire it up. And then you'll see how fast it gets to temp. And this thing is cold, y'all. I mean, it hasn't been cooked in a week. Uh, it's been sitting out here. So I'm going to do a little cleanup on it. Uh, and. Uh, show you uh what i do uh and i'm rambling now so let's get uh, let's get cranking man. let's get uh, into this video some of y'all may be saying hey what pellets are you using rich uh, uh today i'm using bnb bnb competition blend pellets uh, i've used them multiple times in the past they've been great uh, i've used pit boss hickory before the pit boss hickory has been good uh, i've used smokehouse I've used Traeger pellets, I've used Lumberjack pellets, I've used probably everything that's on the market available to uh, for cooking uh, uh, pellets uh, uh, in a pellet grill and uh, right now uh, I've narrowed it down to I think um, Lumberjack 
but lumberjack's hard to get unless you order online and b and b has been great i haven't had any issues with b and b uh pellets and uh that's what we're cooking with today guys and uh, let's fire this thing up and let's get some meat on it man let's start cooking some meat i'm ready to eat some ribs later on and some sausage later on and whatever else oh we're gonna do some baked beans too i'm gonna make some homemade baked beans pinto beans i'm gonna go make that and, and put that in a foil pan we're gonna throw that in the pit as well um, and again not necessarily a cooking video more of a how-to on a pellet grill a gator pit pellet grill in this case specifically a ms24 uh, meat singer model i've got a lot of these out there they're very popular in concession trailers like you see in mine uh, they're 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 big this thing holds 18 briskets and that's a small one holds 18 briskets the uh, larger ms36 will hold 25 to 30 briskets to give you an idea of capacity so this one's a, a, a ms24 like i mentioned and it will hold 18 briskets and we're gonna put that uh get this thing fired up so i'll see y'all here in a minute i'm gonna move the camera and stick it in there so we can watch and see what happens man again uh you see this pit on my website at GatorPit.net. You can order my Gator Pit rubs. I've got brisket. I've got uh, chicken rubs, uh, pork rubs, rib rubs, Cajun seasoning, and steak. It's all great seasonings. Uh, it's professionally uh, mixed for me and packaged for me. These aren't being made in my garage. They're not being made in my house. They are actually at a co-packer. Uh, and they have SKU numbers on them. We're actually uh, going to start looking at getting these into, into some stores uh, here locally in the Houston area and, and our surrounding areas. Uh, but they're great rubs. We sell a bunch of it. I go through probably, uh, oh man, I'm thinking our last order uh, through our co-packer was uh, 15 cases a month right now, I believe. Right at 15 cases a month. Or actually, probably 30 cases a month. We order 15 at a time, twice a month. So it's 30 cases a month right now we're going through. Small potatoes, but you know what? That's <laughs> not too bad, man. Uh, and a lot of a lot of that is repeat. And then those friends of friends eat those guys barbecue with my seasoning on them, and then they wind up ordering. That's and that's just how it works, right? Same thing with my cookers, my barbecue pits, my custom cookers. Uh, same thing happens with that, man. Uh, friend goes over to the house friend's house and cooks on a party gator or cooks on a 2448 or riches edition and they're like man that was great barbecue great seasoning i want to get the season i want to buy pit and they call me there you go that's how it works um so let's get busy man i'm starting to ramble again and uh rant not rant but just rambling on so i do that a lot by the way i talk a lot and i talk fast and i'll, I'll try to keep it slow and uh let's get inside this this contraption i got behind me I love my trailer. Uh, I've had this thing now for going on, I think, two years. This is one of two concession trailers that I have. The other one's just a monster. It's huge. It's a full-blown concession. It's, it's, I don't know. I got, man, it's, it's just massive. It's big. Uh, it's not one I like to haul around a whole lot, to be honest, because it's just heavy. It weighs about, uh, I think, 10,000 pounds, 11,000 pounds. Uh, this one's lightweight. It sits on tandem 3500s, electric brakes, 20-foot aluminum uh, shell. Uh, our exterior and it's, it's completely built out you'll see here in a little bit in the video when i, when I put in there to show the ribs but this is a good lightweight trailer you can haul this with a, uh, my dodge 1500 pickup right here or my son's dodge 1500 pickup very easily it's not a problem tongue weight's great uh, anyway so i've been loving this trailer uh this one mainly stays at my house guys i cook it i cook all the time by the way i cook during the week uh, uh, uh it's not uncommon for me to cook several times or, or at least once during the weekday uh, but I cook every weekend. There's not a weekend passes I don't cook, uh, whether it's brisket, ribs, butts. I cater, as, as many of y'all know that follow me, I cater. My last catering job was a couple weeks back. I did 30 briskets. Uh, I use this and I use my Falcon Mobile that I have. Uh, another one of my personal pits is a Falcon. I love that, that mobile, it's great. Uh, and so between my meat slinger with the 18 briskets in it and my Falcon with the other uh, briskets in it, it holds 12. I cooked everything at one time. I cooked it overnight. Uh, it was great. The, the, the guy that, that ordered from me uh, owns uh, some nursing facilities, healthcare facilities, and it was for his staff. And he wound up serving uh, the briskets actually to uh, his patients or, or, or people living in his facilities. And uh, he sent me a text. I asked him how everything was. He sent me a text. That it was the best brisket he ever had. And this is a Texas boy who cooks himself. He just didn't have a means of cooking that many briskets for his facilities that he owns. And uh, he said it was the best briskets he ever had. And that, that was quite a compliment, by the way. Uh, coming from somebody who I know cooks a lot and knows how to cook, 
to tell me that he loved that. And it was a combination of my meat slinger pellet grill and my offset falcon uh, stick burner. Uh, and they were good briskets because I actually had had some myself that were great. Anyway, again, it goes back to me talking a lot. So let's get let's get into this thing, man. Let's see what's happening. Let's uh, show you guys that, that are interested in a meat slinger, interested in one of my pellet grills, and let's show y'all how to fire this thing up, how easy it is, and what I do and how I do it. And there's no perfect way or one set way to do it. I'm just showing you what I do. And I will, I will say this, individual results may vary because what I do and what somebody else tries to copy or duplicate doing may not get the same end result because what I've found out over 30 years in business is you watch me and I can show you, and the same thing with my cooking classes. Not everybody will do exactly what I do and they don't get the same end result. And then there's a lot of factors that play with it too, right? So today I've got a pretty good day. It's hot, it's 100 degrees out here, it's hotter than crap. Uh, I've got a little little breeze blowing, so that helps, and it's a little cloudy, so that helps too. But your weather conditions a, a, a contribute or are a factor in how your pits are going to run. I don't care whose pit it is, what it is. But that, you know, unless it's sitting in a house and or not, in, a, in a restaurant and it's enclosed, and then it's going to be consistent. Uh, but you still have drafting. These things all draft outside, whether they're in a restaurant or not, they still draft. So that, that external weather outside can still affect anything that's inside drafting out. So there, everybody has to keep in mind, there's so many factors that play into how a cooker runs, whether it's mine or anybody else's. Um, so keep that in mind when you're cooking. Uh, if you do everything that I say you do and you don't get the same end result, uh, cook again, try it again. And here's my granddaughter. This is Bailey, say hi. Bailey, say hi. Say hi to the camera. Say hi everybody. <laughs> so let's get this pit going. Let's get this meat slinger fired up and show you what I do guys. See y'all here in a bit. All right, y'all wanna, hey Bradley, why don't you take the camera and just walk inside and let's fire this thing up and you just video it. I never turn it off, it's still running. So it's recording right now. The only thing I worry about is looking at power, but we're, we're fully charged. And I don't think it's going to run long enough to worry about the power, much less run out of the 40 something minutes it had on the video. You want to pop this video? <coughs> we'll just keep it filming, whatever. It's going to be cut and edited. Does nobody use like really panic gross. curse words? <laughs> it's really cool. Alright, so come on in here, Bradley. Okay. Got one of my boys, Bradley, filming. Uh, got my other, my other son. Been here, so and my granddaughter and my my daughter, and this is the meat slinger. This is the smaller, and I got my dogs. This is the smaller uh, MS, being meat slinger 24. This is the one that actually holds 18 briskets. It looks small, but it holds a lot of meat, guys. And you're fixing to see how it holds 18 briskets when I open this thing up and how I designed it. So you got the dual gauges, top and bottom. These are Gator Pit commercial gauges, and they are recalibratable. And Ben, can you can you call Gabby out? Thank you, Ben. It's got an adjustable stack up there. It's got your side pellet, uh, uh, Smoke Daddy Pellet Pro, uh, digital hopper on the side there. It's 35 pound hopper. Uh, this is the 12 inch model. Uh, it does have the stainless steel upgrades. It's not on, obviously. And then I'm gonna open the door up. Bradley gonna work his way around. It is tight in my porch area, but I designed this. This model came about designing it to fit in this trailer and then people loved it. So we wound up just making it a model. So it is dirty. So I cook all the time, guys. It hasn't been cleaned out since I last cooked, which is a, uh, a few days ago, actually. And and I did that intentional because I wanted to open this thing up today and show y'all what it looks like when it's been burning. In this case, this was a, uh, a nine to 12 hour burn. And that's what it looks like after nine, 12 hour burn. And I was cooking briskets. And I do have the fire pot removed. I've got uh, uh, the fire pot down there. It's got the stainless steel fire pot upgrade on it. And then I've got all these meat racks in here. And these meat racks are all uh, uh, in the slides here and they're, they're all adjustable and interchangeable. I got my grease pan here. I got my heat shield just pushed to the side. And what I do to clean this thing up is if your pitch really nasty on the grace, then take it out. You can put some oven cleaner on it and water hose it and brush it off uh, with a bristle brush or some other type of brush. Uh, but that's, that's a good thorough way of cleaning your meat racks. Uh, I had pressure sprayed these and uh, uh, oven cleaned them before my last cook. I'm not going to clean them today. There's no point in cleaning that stuff right now. They're not that. They're not bad. Uh, but there's a point that you probably after this cook today, I'll probably take the racks that I do cook on. But you'll notice these are stacked up top. I'm only going to put the racks down here because I like to cook primarily here, unless I'm putting all that meat in there and then I fill it all up. But we're going to cook on these racks right here. 
I'm gonna put two racks, I'm gonna move these down. There won't be a rack below it because there's no point in getting a rack that you're not using gunked up with, with meat rubs and juices and fats and all that. So it, it's gonna help me uh, uh, later to clean up because I only have to clean the racks that I'm using, which will be two racks as opposed to six racks. So right now I've got the rack stacked up top because I need to access this down here. So I'm gonna use a shop vac. If you don't have one, if you've got a pellet grill and you don't have one of these, like 30 bucks, at, uh, I think I got this at Walmart. Uh, I'm gonna turn it on so it's gonna be real noisy here in a minute, but I'm gonna use this to clean all that out and it makes it really easy. And you don't wanna do this if you are if you're, you have hot pellets, by the way. There's, there are no hot pellets in here. This pit hadn't been turned on for, for a few days. So here comes the noise, y'all, but I'm gonna suck all this stuff out and then I'm gonna put everything in and we're gonna fire it up and you're gonna see what happens. All right, I had to turn the generator on. It's probably up from the power. <laughs> Baby. Oh God. Oh Ben, are you kidding? It's a day in the life. Oh, thank free Hollis. Okay, got him. Bye, beans. Yeah, it's all recorded. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> Good cameraman. <laughs> no, it's, always, it's always rolling. You, can, you never know what's gonna happen. It goes. Dun, dun, dun. Is that what I was hearing this morning? Like I woke up to, to like that and it was very annoying because I was trying to go back to sleep. Why is it cold? I don't, I don't know. Around it's 10. Dad, can you hear me? Or? Why is it rattling so bad? Because it's all trying to shut up. It's like a snake. Why is it rattling? It's a rattlesnake. Yeah. That's the most really delightful bad. sound in the morning. All right, not going. All right, so this is gonna get loud, guys. Between the generators I just kicked on for the trailer, give me some power, and now I'm fixing to kick on this little shop back. So it is going to get loud. And it don't matter, you just gotta see what I'm doing. Wow. Damn. <laughs> Something here, right? So that's that. So now I'm gonna put the fire or the heat shield over. I'm gonna put my grease pan in. Give me some gloves because the grease pan is gonna be nasty. You do 
it does have a grease drain down there. So your grease off your grease pan is channeled towards that grease drain. You can see it obviously is what it does because there's grease down there. And then I can open up my valve and drain that out with a little bucket or full pan down there. So I'm gonna put our grease pan in. There we go. So there's little tabs in here that keep make sure that this thing is actually aligned when you put it in because it only goes one way, right? So you can't mess it up. And there's a, 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 a mount or a bracket on the side wall of this wall that actually holds it up. And you can see it's got about a two inch pitch to it. So when your grease drips or your juices from your meat drips, it hits this pan, it's gotta go out towards the grease drain. And what I like to do is I like to put a little foil on top of this. And we'll grab some foil because the foil is gonna help keep that pan clean and we just take the foil, ball it up, and throw it away. Here we go. Now that foil is going to catch most of our juices that drip and come time to clean this thing out we'll actually take the foil and just ball it up roll it up and throw it away and then your pan's pretty much clean or cleaner making it easier for you so now we are going to move some meat racks down this is my lower rack this is the one that actually fits there i'm going to take the meat racks that i cooked on last time and i'm going to use those for this cook and i'm going to put one here and we'll take the other one that I used. Let's see, where's it at? Yep, I think that's it. Nope, that's it. Yep, and we're going to use this one. We're going to put it there. And those are the two racks we're going to cook on. These racks have, haven't been cooked on since I last cleaned them. There's no point in having them down below these racks that I'm going to cook on with my ribs because they're going to get nasty and I'm not even using them, so no point in doing that. Just make your job easier clean it up after you get through cooking today. So now we're going to fire this thing up. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to leave my door open like that, just cracked. I'm going to turn on, we'll focus in on here. I'm going to hit my own button. It says standby. I'm going to feed because I remember I sucked my pellets out of my fire pot, so there's no pellets in there, not a heating router now. So I'm going to hit the feed button once. And you can actually, I don't know if the mic will pick it up, but I can hear, I'm gonna hear pellets here in a minute drop on my fire, in my fire pot on my heating rod. You need some pellets on that heating rod. And I know right now the auger's turning because I hit that feed button. So I'm waiting, I'm being quiet because I'm starting, I hear the auger turning. And I hear the pellets dropping. still hear the, I don't know if the mic's picking up over the generator, but I can hear the pellets dropping. Again, when you're cooking, guys, you have to use your a lot of your senses. It's, it's, it's you know, your, your, your touch, your hands, your, your hearing, uh, your eyes. You gotta use all those senses when you're cooking. All right, so now we've got some pellets in there. I'm pretty sure I got enough pellets. I'm gonna hit the low smoke mode. I know Smoke Daddy's instructions say to hit the high button to start your, your cooker up. I don't do that. Can't give you a real reason why, other than I've never had problems starting with low smoke and working my way up to temp. And you're gonna see what's gonna happen here. Bradley can catch it. Is give it a little bit and we're gonna have some smoke starting to build up in the cooker. And that's actually a good thing. It takes a couple minutes. So we're just gonna sit here and wait.
hear some pellets dropping. That heating rod is heating up. I'm starting to smell a little burning. So we're going to see some smoke here in a little bit, guys. Again, I cleaned the fire pot out with a little shot back and I fed some pellets with the feed button to the to the heat rod in the fire pot. I'm smelling more smoke now. And I'm starting to see a little bit. I don't know if the camera's picking up, but I'm starting to smell and see it now. And I turned the feed button off. Or actually I just I went right to the to the uh, low smoke button. And I'm smelling smoke. I got my stack open by the way. Let me address that. My stack's fully open. I've got an internal damper on this one, it runs fully open. You can adjust it if you want. I don't. I've never had a need to. Smell it now. Yeah, I'm starting to smell it and see it more now too. And it's gonna start popping a lot of smoke out here in a minute. Y'all watch. I mean it's gonna just bellow smoke out. And we're gonna wait for that smoke to dissipate. And then we're gonna hit our mid button, which puts us at 275 uh, 270 degrees. Let's see there's more smoke coming out now the bottom. So we're gonna hit that mid button here. Uh, and you'll start hearing fans kicking in. Uh, you're starting to see smoke now, probably in the video, it's probably picking up. Uh, and you can hear, again, it goes back to listening to your cooker. Even if it's an offset stick burner, you still listen to your pit, guys. It will talk to you. I'm, I'm, that's no bullshit. Your pits will tell you what's going on if you just listen to them. Fan just kicked on like I said it would. We're going to start seeing a lot more smoke coming in. start putting some smoke out here in a minute. I mean, it's going to be like crazy smoke. And guys, y'all can cook in this low smoke mode, by the way. That is a cooking uh, setting. More smoke. put smoke out like I said it would. Guys this is what you want to see when you fire up your, your pellet grills whether it's my horizontal or my vertical pellet grill. Now the other fans kicking in it's gonna start pumping out a really bunch of smoke almost to the point where you can't even stand in here. Alright but then in a little while it's gonna dissipate it's gonna start clearing up. the fans kicking up in high gear right now we're gonna start seeing that smoke clear and dissipate which is starting to do now and I know all this guys because I cook all the time man I know exactly what this thing's gonna do this is called this is knowing your pit the only way you know your pit is to use it and there goes the smoke it's starting to disappear right good while we're doing this one of the things I want to show y'all too I'm just think, just thought about it is you always want to keep your your probes or thermometer stems clean there's one right in here can you get right there Bradley there's one right here that's actually your controller all right that's what tells you the controller what temperature your pit is always clean that off and if you're doing a really long cook wipe it off between those in that long cook like six hours into it or, or eight hours into it it's an all-night cook when you get up in the morning then when you get up in the morning come check everything just wipe it off get this stuff off of it all right that's what happens in cookers right gets smoke build up and, and stuff on it right same thing with your door gauges clean all that stuff off all right, the only thing I touched was the stems, right? Look, all they came off the stems. That can affect your readings. All right, so now the smoke's gone. I still smell it. It's smoking. Don't think it did. 
you can smell the smoke, you can smell those wood pellets burning. I'm now going to close my door and we're going to go over here and we're going to hit the mid button which puts us at 270 degrees. It's a preset at 270. If you want to run 250, hit the mid button and then drop it down with the minus sign to your 250. If you want to run 275, push the plus button. It goes in five degree increments. And that's how easy it is to set it. Watch, watch how fast this thing's gonna start getting the temp. It went from 99 to 100, just, just like that fast, a few seconds. Now watch, it, now that that door's closed, it's gonna really start climbing really quick. 101. And it's gonna start getting faster as, as that chamber heats up. It typically averages about, uh, <laughs> I want to say 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes to get to 270. Again, all that's affected by factors of weather, pressure. Uh, you got to keep all that stuff in mind when you're cooking, guys. And that's why I'm going to tell you, individual results may vary from what, I'm, what you're experiencing or seeing me do, all right? A lot of factors in cooking, even when you're cooking on something that's what people think set it and forget it. You still have to know how to cook. You still have to know how to operate it. 107 now, so it went from 99 to 108 now. And just not even what, a minute, not even a minute, I don't think. So it's climbing, guys. 10 degrees in less than a minute. <clears throat> now, one thing I want y'all to know is a lot of pellet grills don't come with, with gauges other than their, their PID controllers or their, their digital controllers. The reason that it is is because these gauges take longer to catch up to the digital that's in here. So right now it's reading what 100 and uh, not even a little over 100 degrees, 105, 110, uh, which is what that is right now. But you're going to see this get way above these on the door, the temperatures on these doors. But this is going to take a lot longer to catch up, and these usually get caught up in until uh, probably an hour or so into it, when all this gets heated up, then these kind of catch up and, 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 and may match what's over here. But this is the one that's most important. This is the one that you need to go by, not these. Uh, and then when you put meat in here, guess what? All this drops back down again, all right? And once that meat starts to cook and heat up, then the gauges catch back up, all right? Go by what's, go by what's over here, more so than these right here and if you want there's another little tip put your little oven thermometer in there set that in there and put that on the grate level i'm gonna open up and throw that in there real quick i'm gonna put it next to my pid controller thermometer all right that's going to really tell you what the internal cooking temperature is because that thermometer is actually sitting on the grate all right so it's going to be your most accurate temperature reading as to what your pits or what your meat's cooking at inside at the grate level because you're always going to be hotter than that grate level. Keep that in mind, guys. So we're 116 now. And I just opened the door, so it dropped. But it's going to catch right back up real quick. So we're going to shut the camera off. We're going to grab our racks of ribs. We're going to get them in the trailer. We're going to start prepping those. When we get the ribs in there, I'll turn the camera back on and we'll just film us prepping some ribs real quick. All right. See you in a minute, guys. It's about 220 right now. It's almost at that 270. Uh, we're going to want it. By the time we get these ribs prepped, we should be at temp. We're going to throw them in the pit. I got my, my, my boys with me. There's Ben, Adam, Bradley. We got Bradley and granddaughter, Bailey. And Bradley's over there, and Adam's over there preparing the ribs. What they're doing now is they're pulling the membrane off the back. He's going to paper towel to do that. And then they're going to start putting some uh, Dell's marinade on there. I like to use the Dell's. It makes that dry rub stick to it real good. And Dell's got a good flavor to it. Dell's is also a good dipping sauce. If you like ribeyes or steaks, Dell's is a really good dipping sauce for steaks, by the way. But uh, here we are pulling the membranes off. Get those 
membrane's pulled off, and I will come back. There you go, coming off in sheets, guys. Man, first time these boys have done this. Shit, it's a second. <laughs> I wish I was going to say, guys, a few hundred racks of ribs I've done. No idea. To me, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. I don't even know how that becomes a land yesterday. No idea. No idea. No idea. I'll tell you what I do. At least though. 10. I got thirsty doing that. Yeah, you always have to ask for that. Yeah. Hell no. Seriously, I have no idea how many racks we're going to do. Much less briskets, but that's anything else. Uh, I'm going to really put thousands of uh, briskets. <laughs> it's not an exaggeration. Thousands. <laughs> Probably the same with the ribs there. Probably not as many butts. In fact, I know not as many butts, but I've put thousands of briskets. And probably, probably that for ribs, man. When you start cooking for wooden warriors and feeding uh, three, 100 plus at a time, and you're cooking for Hurricane Katrina, and Rita, and Ike, and Hurricane Harvey. Yeah, I've slung some meat, guys. We have slung some meat. Alright, leave the broom here though, babe. Don't touch that pit. So here we are to get a good concession, Charlie. And yes, it's nice good AC. commercial sink over there. We got a separate hand wash sink over there. All stainless obviously. I've got my big prep table here or on an extra table here. I got my pretty base server over there. Uh, obviously high cold cold water. It's a 40 gallon fresh water tank in there. Uh, it's a larger uh, dirty water tank, a dirty water tank down below. Two and a half gallon hot water heater. Pretty much against it. Hot water is going to happen. This side, I'm going to throw some guys. Got a jumping in there now. It's nice to have all this help, man. That's just six racks of ribs. <laughs> Love it. And then, of course, you turn around, and it goes up to the area. This trailer is licensed by uh, Fort Bend Health Department, and also the Harris County Health Department, and also uh, permitted uh, by the fire marshal. That's all about permitting right there. I do have my certification uh, of completion for my uh, Harris County Food Manager training and examination, uh, and my public health permit, and then my fire permit. Uh, and I keep this on the wall as well, uh, which are just reminders and, and, and what you're supposed to do and need to do uh, when you cater. So we keep everything nice and sanitary, sanitary and everything in my trailer. Of course, today, you know, we're cooking at home. But after these cook, before I do a commercial job, this thing needs to be completely white. I need to get some fully sanitized. Uh, uh, floors get mopped, console mopped, walls get mopped down, floors uh, bleach, uh, sinks get scrubbed down, same thing. Uh, water system is flushed out, completely flushed out. Very water tanks get dumped, it goes to the commissary uh, as well uh, before each of my jobs. Contract me to cook for you. Rest assured, we are sanitation, food safety is priority. It's all good, guys. So what you see today doesn't always is not exactly what happens when we do a cater job. These guys will be wearing gloves, food safety gloves. So I'm saying all this because I don't want people to hammer me when this thing publishes because I get hammered all the time. You guys just come there and just kind of hammer me. So this is us cooking for us here at my house. <laughs> putting that Dale's on right now. I love Dale's, man. Dale's good stuff. Moore's is also good. I prefer the Dale's over the Moore's. Always marinade is good. I don't, I don't marinate anything overnight. 
anybody's wondering that, I'm going to ask that. Anybody has to answer the question right now because I get that. I get that asked that question all the time. I don't marinate, marinate any meat overnight. I will marinate fajitas, fajita meat, beef fajita meat. I will marinate that for about 20 minutes tops. Wild game, I'll marinate. Like duck breast, fish, I'll marinate that. But again, it's only for about 20 minutes. Let's take that wild game uh, uh, taste and smell of it. Anybody cooks wild game like ducks, deer, venison? Use that nails on it. Uh, you can even put uh, like on fish, fish fillets. Uh, put it in a Ziploc bag and put the Tabasco sauce in there. Shake that around. Let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes. A little Tabasco sauce in there. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. And it will take out the fishy uh, smell and taste. For those, those of y'all that don't know that. Again, guys, I cook all the time. I cook everything. I cook everything. I'm from South Louisiana. I cook everything. Seafood, uh, ribs, brisket, chicken, pulled pork, fish, there's a rib rub right there. Get the rib rub. Excellent stuff. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
slot out. I can't put it in a window like that. More beer. It's a... Uh, you some, is there anything on the uh, table right there? You, you can put three to four racks in that, that one you slid out just now. Put three on there. And then we'll go where the sausage is. Let's go three on top. guys back here uh, turn the iPhone video on and we're bouncing 246 47 48 I don't know if it shows up in the video 246 it goes to 248 250 it's bouncing around that 250 setting that I have it in right now and uh, let's open up the door and see what that internal uh, gauge is saying the lower gauge says 250 as you can see there the upper gauge is reading cooler at 225, uh, actually less than, lower than 225, but I guarantee you that thing is hotter. It's hotter than out of here. I promise you it's hotter. And we're going to open up this uh, thermometer and, uh, or this door and see what we got on the internal thermometer. It's at the great level because that is your most, most accurate one. And it says 250, which is what the PID controller set at. This thing, and that's look. There's the door, the thermometer, the upper thermometer reading less than 250. There's the internal oven shift thermometer, the oven thermometer reading 250. Of course, it just dropped because I just the door got open. And these are the ribs down there cooking. We'll fix the wrap these ribs up and uh, put them back on. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm happy. Can't beat it. This thing's running perfect. It's cooking at the temp it's set at, obviously. You'll see that drop down to 232, 233. That's gonna happen when the door's open. It's gonna bounce right back in, a, in just a matter of a few minutes. Uh, but don't let these door gauges throw you guys off man, when you're cooking on these pellet grills. All right, what matters is that right there. That's what matters. And if, if you wanna confirm that with the internal gauges or the internal oven thermometers, put a couple of them in there as well, like I just did. I showed you, they matched up 250, 250 on the inside at the great level. All right, these door gauges aren't gonna be quite as accurate. They're cool looking, they look good. I love them, they're gator pit gauges. But that's a big old pit right here. This thing's huge, it's like almost 18 uh, 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 square feet of cooking capacity, holding 18 briskets. Those stems are only two and a half inches long. They're not telling you what's happening overall back here and at the great level. That oven thermometer in there is going to give you the best reading, and it did match that right there. Without a doubt, y'all just saw that. That was live. No bullshit. All 
All right. So we're cooking 250 there, 250 here. I'm going to kick the setting down. Bradley, you want to kick that setting down to 225? Hit the minus button. Go down 225 in five minute, five uh, uh, degree increments. And we're going to wrap the ribs. And we'll put them back on. See you. Pulling them off, I'm gonna wrap them up. So three at a time. Looking good, looking good. Grab both, grab uh, both poles. We're gonna drop them. There you go. I would not have crushed that. Alright, so we're about to wrap these up. We're gonna do some butter, some coke, some other stuff to them, which I'll see here in a minute. And then we're gonna put it back on the bit. This one's for you, Rally. Seasonings mixed, Riley's uh, triple R barbecue sauce. It's just about every rack with a different. Great, whatever. Try to send it off to a lab. Oh yeah, look at that guy. Oh yeah. 
pretty good. Let's have another right, let's go. I just wondered if it was that teriyaki and apple. This one had no teriyaki, I can tell you that. And I, I did not put any apple juice when I spritzed. I didn't spritz at all. Yeah, these were spritzed. I'm talking about my full ribs. Baby, talk to me. I wanted to try that. Um, my dad, look at this. He used to do it on the grill. And it came out with something real tough. I'm talking about juicy. Juicy. Yeah, that's good. Pick it up, stand it up, and let the knife follow the bone. Yeah. There you go. This is a little uh, spray. I usually overcook mine, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Look at that, look how crooked that bone is. Oh, my, oh look at that, it's crazy. Crooked ass. Bone. Meat's over here. Look at that. Yep. Bones like that. <laughs> Meat's following it. That's a scrawly hole. <laughs> it's all good. None That's what your, happens, man. None of yours is crap shooting about racks of ribs, right? Especially when you buy a three pack, because the middle the middle rack is the mystery rib. That's you it. Have no idea what that middle rack is. Look at that curve. You see how that curve right here? Look. Look at that. That's following the bone. That's how squirrely that is. Pretty good. Dude, this is competition quality right here for sure. That's what we were going out for. Oh my god. Can't beat it. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah, it's not a pain. Let's go. 
you're going to run to the middle. Right through the middle. That's a, look how big that really is. Meat, both sides. Six racks of ribs on two racks, but you can get five to six racks of ribs per rack. So, it, <laughs> so you didn't even have those two? No, uh, it was teasing that meat slinger, man. Oh, cricket that rib is. This is the bone right here. Yeah, it's really ribbed up. I better get back to the house. Thank you, sir. You got it, John. Fantastic. Hey, thanks for stopping by, man. Yep. Tell everybody hello to Family High. Pour the juice in the last one right here. I will. Good guys. Put that sucker over. There we go. I know people, some people don't like the full wrap, but we like the full wrap. Because of this reason right here. All that juice. All that juice, man. That's just good juice. Alright. We are out of here. We're going to eat, everybody. Let me put this sucker around. I don't know if I can or not. Hey, I don't know if, this seat, if you can see me or not. This is Rich Robin, Getty Pit of Texas. Uh, we cooked our six racks of ribs. We are done. We got them cut in the full pan. And we are now going inside the house to actually eat the ribs. I've got some beans as well, some baked beans. I didn't show you that, but I'll get some pictures later. Uh, I'll pull those out and I'll get some photos and just show the photos of that. But we are now going in to eat and we're putting the last little bit of foil uh, juice in the ribs. The crowd is doing out there. And there they are, guys. That's one full pan. And here is the other out there so we're going inside to eat guys gator pit rich robin and family we are out of here see ya